going on, you guys? Just as a quick heads up before we get into today's video, there are going to be spoilers pertaining to the game via imagery from actual gameplay footage. So viewer discretion is advised and enjoy the review. Finding yourself in the growth of humanity isn't the easiest. There's doubt, confusion, anger, and most of all, regret. God of War Ragnarok shows us humanity in the lives of gods, changing their future when prophecy spat in their face. This game has a delicate balance of puzzles, bosses, intricate game design, and a slow burn story that creates dynamic flow. All of these different components bring together what the God of War Ragnarok experience is. God of War Ragnarok is an incredible feat of developmental, narrative, and graphic proportion. I feel it tried to do too much in certain areas, but hit the nail on the head in others. What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome to my review of God of War Ragnarok. Man, this game was a ride. And you guys saw it all. You guys saw the playthrough. I actually did a long playthrough of this and there was still footage that I cut out because if I had uploaded all of the episodes as is, each episode probably would have been almost three hours long. But enough about how I'm going to be getting gray hairs very soon. Let's get into this review. God of War Ragnarok displays true narrative finesse. Its story continues where God of War 2018 left off. It showcases a slow burn and utilizes the elements of surprise in an organic way. This third-person action-adventure open-world game lets you in on the character's personality and bonds you to them over a period of time. With 18 chapters spanning the game, there is more than enough time to explore the game's story and its surroundings in its entirety. Even the characters will remind you that you're in no rush and encourage you to explore as much as possible. The main story will take about on average 20 to 25 hours to complete and still will have more things to explore after the main story. With a slow burn of a story like this one, it'll take some time to get into the flow of it. So if this type of storytelling really isn't your cup of tea, then maybe the intense action and puzzles will be more suited to your palette. With chaotic moments that turn gentle at the drop of a hat, everything is unpredictable in this game in the best possible way. Now, while this game is stunning visually and has a truly inspired story, there were moments of where I felt there was so many filler-esque type things going on, especially very early on in the game. This isn't in the article that I posted, but there's a moment of where you're searching for ingredients for paints with Agraboda. I feel like that was a very side quest-esque moment and did not belong anywhere in the main story of the game. Some of the puzzles felt unneeded, some of the moments like you know, the one that I just mentioned, they felt just very much more like side quests rather than actual parts of a main story. And also the fact that Mimir and Atreus had to butt in every single time that I was so close to getting a puzzle done, they were like, hey, you should try doing this. I was I was very close to getting it done. I was succeeding. I was doing the thing. And, and here you are, butting in. Why tell me the answer when I'm almost done? I don't get it. All right, go home, have a coffee, and wait till I'm almost done with the damn puzzle. Just don't butt in. Stay out of it. I feel like that could be fixed if I up the difficulty, but I'll have to test that theory out. By the time all is said and done with this game and you're getting more into the story, it is far longer of an experience than it needs to be. I feel like 15 hours max should have been what this game was. I feel like that's what uh, the, the last God of War game was, around 15 hours to completion. This game, God of War Ragnarok, took me far longer to complete than God of War 2018. It could have been a 15 hour game and I could have wanted more, but by the end of the game, I just felt like, uh, you know, from dealing with all of the hordes of monsters, from just the kind of repetitive nature of the combat style, by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm glad that that's over, but I'm going to miss the story and the experience that I had with it because the story is the best part of the game, not the combat. Every other issue that I had with this game, it pales in comparison to one of the main problems that I had with it. And that's the uh, the horde of enemies that you face at every turn. Listen, I love a good combat sequence. I'm a fan of those types of sequences. But when they happen more than twice after you've had a boss battle or after you've had a main kind of uh, pivotal point in the story, it gets a bit annoying. You finished by a climb doll. Have a horde. You just finished a mini boss. Here, have a few hordes. I honestly, I felt like I was an Oprah. I was half expecting to find a monster horde underneath my chair. It was interesting. It was really intriguing to see what kind of enemies were going to come my way because we have some new monster types in this game. But after a while, it just became annoying and repetitive. Especially when you're on low health and you have to fight two Winyars and three Enyar Tamers. Okay, it's not fun. 
mean, it's fun if you're playing as Atreus, but when you're playing just as Kratos and you get the whole smash him and bash him and repetitive thing going, it just, it gets, it gets annoying. These fighting segments could have been paced a lot better. And throughout the time that I was having these uh, you know, a repetitive fight sequence go on and on. It reminded me of two games, Dark Souls 2 and Final Fantasy 15. This isn't a diss on those two games whatsoever. It's just the style that I've noticed. And for me personally, like, I, I love Final Fantasy 15, again, because of the story. I like Dark Souls 2 because of the story, not because of the fighting sequences and hordes that you have to face in very inconvenient moments. After you see so many enemy types and for it to just go on and on, it felt kind of dull by the end of it. And I was like, okay, when do we get back to this story again? Because that's what I want to see more of. The only fighting segments in this game that I found remotely interesting in the least was when we're going to get Thor to get the final mask piece. And you have that big, massive brawl right in the bar. Best bar fight ever. The controls in this game are some of the smoothest I've seen besides Assassin's Creed Valhalla. God of War Ragnarok takes the controls from the previous installment and keeps the same control work while enhancing it and making it more fun to experience. Something new in this installment of God of War, you can play as Atreus in certain sections. By far some of the best gameplay is with Atreus. His abilities are fun, slick, and certain combos just make the experience a lot more satisfying to play. God of War Ragnarok embodies great usage of psychology, manipulation of another person, great dialogue, and brilliant storytelling. God of War 2018 took the God of War franchise, gutted it, and made it into a new beginning entirely. Kratos, over the span of the franchise, grew, matured, and became the father and person he always wanted to be. Learning to control his anger and tendencies enough to realize that being a father is more of a responsibility than being a god ever was and ever will be. This game's story is a special one, and while we're not all powerful gods, we can still learn a great deal from this game's journey. Humility, patience, and the courage to let go of old wounds that haunt us. Fate only binds you if you let it. Do what is necessary, not because it is written. But that was my review of God of War Ragnarok. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of the review. But you guys, if you don't like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. I make videos every day here on YouTube. May you find your worth in the waking world, dear hunter. Stay casually nerdy, and I will see you all in the next video. See you guys.